Hello everybody. Today or tonight, it's nighttime where I am. I got another making music in the moment for you. Uh, it's gonna be probably a house track. I'm gonna I'm gonna or a techno. I'm gonna start with a probably a bass drum that has a shorter decay, and then I'm gonna create my own boomy decayed bass and kind of see where that goes and uh yeah so it'll be a little faster probably one 130 i like 130 maybe 128 we'll see but uh yeah let's get into it i will play i'm gonna start to play the entire song right after this so uh you can hear the song and because i like that on the dur video game so yeah so you can hear it from beginning to end all right let's do it
Alright, so let's get into making this. I, since it's so late in my apartment, I'm gonna have to go to headphones here in about 23 minutes, so I don't usually like headphones, but I'm in the mood, so we will get it done and see how that goes. My $20, I think, Sony cheapo headphones. Um, but let's get into it. I think we can use the Pro 2's base for this. I think that'll be... We'll use the Profit 5 filter. Though the Sem filter does have some magical, but we want a 24 decibel, so... We'll go with the Profit 5. Or... Like the Profit 5.
Well, I was gonna have some MIDI with the Pro 2 to uh, just sequence it and then try to change it to dial it in, but for some reason, as you can see here, it's missing the Pro 2. I'm using USB with it and it's connected, so I didn't realize that, but that's okay. We'll get this going here. So I put a pitch, I put an envelope on the pitch and because I wanted to have it more like a bass drum decay, but uh, it's a little light, but I think we can have fun with it. What I'm going to do is on the second bar there, or the half, the second part of this bar, I'm going to cut the bass and then I'm going to add another one because I liked how it's this patch sounded without the envelope. So I'm going to try to play with this and see what I can do. I think first though I'm going to put a group on this and just make this hit sound a little better. And I'm going to put a group and then compress them.
What I'm thinking is, is I'm going to have this bass in this spot where the the bass isn't playing. <clears throat> and I'm going to have it layered. So you still have the sub, and then I'm going to high pass the one with that has a little bit more of the filter, the sound coming through the filter, the cutoff is a little higher. And I'm going to have an effect on that.
right, time to... Oh my gosh, that sounds so weird on headphones, <laughs> hearing myself. Uh, it's time to add a synth sound to get this going. I, I don't know about the bass high here. I think I can probably use it <clears throat> to, to kind of build to something. So I might use it, but I'm going to add another synth sound with the virus and just play around. Because we got a cool little groove here. Now it's just uh, building it, I guess. So what I did is I programmed, um, so it's a default init path, so I think there's patch, so there's two oscillators playing, standard detuning and all that, the saws. And I used a rectifier on filter one, saturation all the way up, very high resonance. It's about three quarters, and I have kind of an ominous, ominous uh, three note chord. And I think I'm gonna just kind of lay this out and then get to there. So I'm gonna kind of get to uh, like bar 33. So I'm gonna just lay out the drums and get there. And then 
throw in this sound. I'm thinking this will work.
Okay, so I played the sound I made with the virus. I've done a lot to the drums to kind of build it up to this part. And when I added this this rectifier patch, it was it was cool. It was a little it's just a little bland and a little too trippy. And I wanted something clicky. I wanted something kind of just a fast tempo and so I thought, I mean, I could just take it and duplicate it and cut it up, but I thought, why not just have a filter with a, the step filter and then just have it really fast, and that's what I did, and I loved how it came out. I do like the low end that it has in it. I think it gives it more presence, so I think that worked out. I'm going to listen to this and see what to do next, because... I'm not going to carry this rectifier sound into the, the bass drum. It's going to have to be something really cool to come up, so that's what I'm going to do right now. phaser on this sound because I kind of want it to be a little more special here but I kind of like how the phaser sounds in there it's very muddy but I think if we layer that it's, it'll sound cool so like layer it with something that's a little more clear and punchy and I don't know maybe we'll use the virus and 
get a, a similar... Maybe we'll use the Moog emulation on the virus, because... Oh yeah, it's not the same. That's the profit. Whatever. It's a four-pole sought after, used in countless records, so there's kind of... I'm going to shut up, but I'll try to... I'll see what I can do with this. <laughs>
I'm gonna play this song from the beginning, but I need to refill my beer. And I listen to the beginning here, and I think I need to add a really cool, just in your face sound that's <clears throat> kind of you're gonna play it in the very beginning, and then you're gonna play it in the very end of the song. That's that's what I'm thinking. So I'm gonna do that, before, and then I'll play it from the beginning, and while I get this beer.
So I decided to just continue it and loop it throughout because it's kind of, it feels right. Um, but I'll play this from the beginning and let you hear this while I go get my drink.
So I think I'm actually going to keep it like this. I think I'm going to, it's, it's more of a progressive type track. So I'm going to, I'm going to loop this for a little bit and see how I feel, but I don't think I should have something crazy happen right here. I'm not feeling that like a brand new sound. I feel like that layered high bass and the introduction of that sub bass, it needs some warming up, you know? So I'm going to loop this and then kind of go from there but I'm liking how it sounded I put a side chain on the rolling hats and took off the chorus to kind of give it a little more movement so it's not so trippy and uh, then added another hat to just bring some interest to let you know that it's going into some new territories so uh, yeah I'm, I'm liking how it sounds so far
so I really like that sound and it'll probably sound cool with uh, the other sound that I'm looking at right here, Audio 22 and I, I have a high pass filter on it and I'm gonna do that so it can kinda switch it up but I like that there basically all this is I have a pulse, a saw, or a square and then I have pulse with modulation on that and then I have um, a wave shaper on the filter yeah a wave shaper on the filter and uh, got some EQ going on on the lows but yeah that's about it basically a pulse with modulation and unison Alright, now it's time for probably the hardest part of the song, and that's uh, trying to figure out what to do for the cool part. It's a little longer than I like it to be. I don't know, that's fine. So yeah, it's uh, let's figure out what to add here. So let's think about it. So we have this pad. I can go back to the pad without the filtering I'm gonna drop the drums I could have a filter on the drums for this part what am I gonna add like it's I could make it very different I could just build on effects I could just try to bring in a new melody and then have a kind of side chain when the drums come in I think I'm gonna try that so I'm gonna I'm gonna have the pad that has no filtering, I mean the, the crazy filtering and then add a sound and I'm gonna do some weird stuff with the drums too so that's what I'm gonna do just cause I think we're about an hour and a half into this so I don't want to <laughs> my tracks are always so long but uh yeah 
Let's, let's continue. I bet my videos are very long. My tracks, sometimes my tracks can be like eight minutes long, but most of the time they're pretty, pretty standard.
So what I'm thinking is I'm using the Moog emulation on the filter. It's a two pole and it's a square. One square, one oscillator with a square and I'm thinking of, it has some resonance. I also have di a digital distortion on it, not on the filter but on the main distortion. And then I'm thinking of bringing in the sub oscillator to bring it into this cool part here. So let's see how this works.
So my plan there was to actually use the original lead sound, kind of acidy sound, and make a change. I should have saved it, but when I did the layer to the higher pitch sound, I removed a lot from the original patch, and then when I tried to go back to add it, I didn't add it properly, so that's why I just kind of just drove the filter. I'll make it work with what we have.
So typically if I wanted to finish this song, what I would do is, is I have this, this part here that's breaking away from the acid type sound. I would bring in the acid sound after this plays a little. So like kind of where, where I stop the drums right here, I would actually start to bring in the acid sound and I would kind of have a cool part with the acid sound with no drums and then I would go into the drums but we're I'm trying to make my videos less long and I don't know you can tell me if you want me to actually finish it but I think you get the idea of the song uh, I think it came out pretty cool and pretty chill <laughs> but uh, yeah so I basically extend this part and bring in the acid so it doesn't just like a one part I would I like to have the the main lead type sound come in twice so anyways that'll do it for this session I'm just going to fade this out and I'll be done